All right. Yeah, we're at the Delaware Valley show. Me and Mike just got here. This is the last day. We've been here for three days, and he's starting to take stuff down. We're, we're probably leaving in about a uh, half hour or so, maybe, maybe an hour. But uh, it's a pretty good show. These are the diehard guys still left. So if you ever go to a show, you know, a Saturday, Sunday show, always go to Saturday, and uh, you'll see stuff. All right, looks like a fog just rolled in. There ain't much, uh, ain't much I can show you because everything's still covered. But man, check out this uh, sun coming up and everything. Oh, you know what? There's Rob. You guys like Rob? Hey, there's Root King. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm making a video, of Rob. So let's, uh, let's dig something up, find something. Tell me something about what you got here. Well, in amongst all the other things I collect, which is crazy too much stuff. Yeah. I like machinist measuring tools. And some of the really old stuff in the uh, You know what? That almost looked like a little coffin when I seen that first. I didn't know what that was. This is a machinist toolbox, probably 1880s or so. Wow. Handmade, or just, you know, long before commercial toolboxes, so they all built built their own stuff. So I fixed this up uh, to basically put some of my smaller things in. And this came out of the George Green uh, machine shop in Laraville, New Jersey, hmm. which was there from like 1910 to 1980. So we've wow. had this quite a while. So I fixed it up a little bit and I put some of my really old machinist tools in it. It's stuff that you probably don't, you could use but probably don't? Yeah, I could. Although there are a couple in here I actually do use. So I'm gonna maybe you know point out some interesting things here. Like this is the like, kind of the oldest piece I have. This is an Ames Square and the patent on this is 1852. So wow. that is long before the combination square. You know, they had to something like this because it does your angles and stuff, and it's hard to tell. But the the, the blade is actually graduated; it's got a scale on it. But hmm. could use a good cleanup. But eh, been that way for a while. I think I'll just leave it. <laughs> a while, let's say. <clears throat> and uh, you know, after using those, then Starrett came out with this, and this is patent 1879. This actually is one of the 1879 ones, and it took me like 20 years to find all the pieces to it. <clears throat> Because it, they're just so rare. I mean, it's skinnier than a normal blade, and it's a nine-inch square. And, you know, it's in between the. What are these here, Rob? What are, what are the holes for? A lot of guys used to do things like a lot of work. Look, was done by hand, where they would take dividers, <clears throat> and they would use these holes to easily line up your points. Oh. And you know, it, huh. so they're done on every quarter inch. So what they do, you want to lay out a two inch, you'd line up four holes and you set your device quickly. There's a lot, a lot of, you know, really odd stuff done, but yeah. I suspect that's what that was. I've never, I've never seen that before. Yeah, the factory didn't do that. The guy who owned it. Right, did right. That. And then, uh, That's another one of them tricks, little machinist tricks. Right, and then there's- Save a little time. You know, indicators, this would go on a lathe and it would have a little pointer there. Huh. <clears throat> that would be, <clears throat> excuse me, your, uh, your fine adjustment for lining us line up stuff in a four jaw chuck. Hmm. Let's see what else we got here. I had, had this for quite a while and I always thought that is just the cutest little pipe wrench. Hmm. I guess it's a salesman sample, but you could use I can't imagine what you'd need a uh, like something that small something that small <laughs> there, but it's a Williams. But hmm. I was like ah, that, well, I guess that, you know for it, it probably was a salesman's uh, thing, and it's just yeah. a lot lighter to carry than a two and a half foot one. Well, these do go up to seven foot, so I guess oh, really? it's, yeah. it's a little easier to take that, take this around than the seven footer. <laughs> um, what else we got here? These these are you know kind of average. My car is thirty. They're not too special, but they are kind of special to me. Mm -hmm. These uh, are my grandfather's micrometers, oh, yeah? and he went to machinist trade school starting in 1938 he, you know he lived on the farm where my shop is now and he went to live with his sister in New York and he went to school uh, to be a machinist and he bought these these are George Shears and they're made in New York hmm. City so and this is what he first used and he was still using these when he retired now wow. this one's pretty well wore out you know because it's been around the block a few times these two are still pretty good yet I still use these mm -hmm. I got them in the box and then when I, if I do pick them up my grandfather's helping me with the job <laughs> And that's the end of the road, right? That, what, yeah. Third generation, and, and yeah. your son has no interest in machinists. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, he's a mechanic, well, but, yeah. you know, he knows what the stuff is, but he just didn't want to do this kind of yeah, trade. Yeah, I don't but, blame him. You know, but so here we are, you know, they've been using these in the, in the family for, you know. You know what I always found years. cool, like, anytime you see something old, 
you know that you look at the lettering and stuff and it yeah. was you know so embellished even the numbers and the letters and it yeah. was just they just made stuff so cool back then and so what this is umc company is the union metallic cartridge company hmm. and they merged with remington in 192 so this tool was older than 192 wow. so this must have been used in their tool room over there for setting up uh, you know jobs but uh you know this is a a, a starrett 12 inch veneer and you know typical of the period you heard them well you know, but it's just, I, you know, I found this, I mean, I have a couple of these and that I actually still use some, but it has that engraving, so that's really cool. It's got some, you know, history to it. Yeah, you know what's funny? Something like that's probably never been dropped. No. <laughs> that's how, that's at how, least how, since I've had it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how, how machinists take care of their tools, you know. So then, uh, there's, you know, other interesting things. You know, this looks like your average twist drill, but, mm -hmm. you know, you look at it, the patent is actually 1863. And I, I didn't know they had twist drills going back that far. But this also doesn't have your normal relief groove. Like there's usually like a, a, a land right, here. Right, right, right. Yeah, but this is just straight. Huh. And it's a Morse, you know, number two taper. But, you know, it, it's like, wow, I didn't think they went that far back. I mean, we're talking Civil hmm. War time here. They had a twist drill. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see what What's this? I've seen this over here. What is that? That's. I've seen, uh, I seen the mercury, so I know <laughs> I know I shouldn't be touching it. <laughs> It's, in, it's, it's mercury under glass, you're okay, saying. Okay, there you go. This is it's kind of some kind of limit switch that I guess it had a rod or something hooking to this, maybe had a float, and mm. it turned a pump on or something, you know, and it, and it dropped back down. Because I always pictured it's like, it's like a piece of a sump pump or something, but it goes, right. it goes back away, and, it just, and it's got, you know, normally open, normally closed switches. You know, so basically it's a little sticky, but yeah. that thing rotates inside when it gets to the end of the travel, and I guess this weight helps reset it. And when the mercury rocks in the vial, it makes a connection because there's a, there's a wire on one side right. and a wire on another. It's other. almost like a thermostat. Yeah, so it doesn't arc because right. the, the mercury, you know, takes up the arc or something. That that's a Mike question though. He's the electrical guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's eating right now. I'm not going to get an answer. <laughs> um, cool. so what what, is, what do you got here? Show me show me some of the Starrett stuff. Okay, this this would be like current <clears throat> current style the Starrett last word indicator. They you know they make millions of these things and it's. Uh, very popular nice indicator I use several in my shop so that would be current style now back in the 30s they were in a little smaller box same kind of indicator like that hmm. and then this is also a last word but I didn't know this Starrett didn't make the last word originally somebody else did and they must have bought the company this is a low HA low Cleveland Ohio last hmm. word and the patent is 1916 and they use almost virtually the same box as this, this hmm. the Starrett one here, it, it it's hard to tell on it, but it does say the last word, but it has oh. low company on it. Huh. And, you know, so I was very surprised to know. I just thought Starrett always yeah. made all their own Left stuff. Over, leftover stock, maybe. When um, they bought the company. You know, they had, they had a shitload of these. Yeah, and, yeah. Huh. You know, it's like I so said, I never even know that they weren't the, uh, the originator of the last word indicator. Hmm. Pretty cool. You know what I noticed? Look at this side. Hold on one of them. What, is it, what do you call that anyway? Caliper or something? Uh, they're uh, outside calipers. Or, or uh, well, firm joint outside caliper. Wow. This is a stack. I, I can't even get the whole thing in the, in the frame. So this, I, I've had this a long time. This was uh, <coughs> come out of the, the maintenance machine shop at National Lead in Sayreville, New Jersey. Hmm. It's an old, old shop, and this was hanging on the wall there. And my dad had bought a machine out of there, a pretty big lathe. And I saw these on the wall, and I asked the guys there to clean up so I could have these. Oh, yeah? I've had these almost 40 years. Huh. And I do use them occasionally because I don't I don't have any micrometers that big. Right, but right. They do go rather large. Wow, that's you know, crazy. So, so then you you know they're a little bit trick to use them because you you'd have to slide them over to work and then you got to bump them to set them and then transfer. Well, what was that opening? That's about five foot opening at least, right? Because you're six what four three two. Yeah. So they don't, they won't quite measure me, but yeah, they're they're almost five foot. Wow, that's incredible. And then he's just a. And then you know they, they, just, they go down the they go down the line to being a little bit smaller and smaller like like these were a pair my dad had you know these these are you know twelve inches and you know this this would have been a very common tool in a machine shop you know when you didn't have a, my commerce large and you had to measure things I mean you know everything was made with these things in you know eighteen hundreds right you know up until Mike's came out micrometer would have been a very big purchase for a machinist you know probably eighteen eighties or something so everything was done with spring calipers. That's cool. You know, I seen this standing up before. I didn't know what it was. What is that? Okay. I thought it was a file because I seen a point. Okay, this is a surface gauge. Huh. So, it's 
probably 1880s, 1890s. I mean, it, there's a lot of hand file work you can see in there. This was, you know, somebody who made it in the shop. You know, they, this is oh, probably so that's handmade. Hand that's uh, yeah, custom made. Yeah, that would be custom made, but it, you know, it's got a brass wing nut, and this would be used on a, on a on a machine table. Like, say, if you're doing a planer and you're doing setup work, hmm. you would uh, start adjusting things, and then you would scribe. Or you mm -hmm. well scribe a line on this side if you're going to make a layout line, or this side here just you would feel along and you would rough and it would make this scratching noise on top of the casting and you right. go over to the other end and you scratch over there and you were lining up right. castings on a planer. This is a very common tool for that. Huh? You know, this cool. <clears throat> Tell me what's going on here. You know, when I looked at this, it almost looks like brass. It's a it's beautiful it's looking and I, right. And then I picked it up and it, you know, I, I knew it wasn't brass. <laughs> Yeah, over to the railroad I volunteer at, uh, the, the one locomotive and the number 400, this is the, a copy of the nameplate on there. The fellow who owns the, the engine, he made some of these out of plastic to give away to, you know, to some of his friends. Hmm. And I'm not sure what the material is, but boy, does it look like oh, it Yeah, it's fooled it's, me. It's a piece of plastic. Yeah, and that's it's, pretty it's cool. A, so they must have just molded and they and they passed in plastic. That's like phenomenal. That is, that's, a, that's an excellent reproduction. You got some a lot, lot of cool stuff here. Yeah, here's another. Here's another really cool thing here. Just the box alone. I like to have the box. Yeah, the box is the box is absolutely beautiful. But yeah. anyways, what this is, this is called a steam engine indicator. And one of the like to say the the head engineer in the factory or possibly the machinist in the factory, you know, they would have a steam engine to run the line shaft to run the machinery. Mm -hmm. Well, to check the efficiency of your steam engine. You would hook this device up, and there's a, all kinds of combinations of springs that would go in the steam line. And as the steam engine slide valve moves, it changes the pressure and things. Right. So what it would do is this would measure that. I don't really want to move it too much no. because. Uh, but anyway, what it amounts to, this cylinder would turn. It's spring loaded. There'd be uh, some pulleys and stuff that and weights to hang off. This would turn very slowly. There'd be a piece of paper wrapped around this, oh. and it is slowly it would be turning. A a record. Yeah. So what it would do is when the engine would make its cycles, mm -hmm. it would it would draw like a seismograph. You see a seismograph yeah. Yeah, it yeah. would do the same kind of thing. And then you would look at that and then you would start measuring and you would you would know where your engine timing was by degrees mm. and you could tell how efficient your engine was right. working. So you could see the see the, the curve of the valve action on both on both sides of the stroke. Huh. And this was a this would have been a common item in a in a uh, in a, any factory that had a steam engine working in it. Or, you know, hmm. and the head engineer would have it. You know, this particular one is a Tabor, and it's made by Ashcroft in Bridgeport, Connecticut, uh, which is also a gauge maker. Right. You know, but they they had everything here for Wait, the tool. And, and how old is that roughly? The patent is 1900. So okay. they they probably go from say 1880s to into the 30s or something. But even you know, they have everything in there. There's even the little bottle of oil to <laughs> lubricate it. <laughs> That's, that's what you think. That's the guy's uh, keeps yeah. it going. <laughs> nah, I think he probably want a bigger bottle. <laughs> yeah, we'll have it somewhere else. Yeah, or have it hidden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's the screwdrivers in there. You know, the, all the valves, the different springs. You know, the wrench. It's all nickel plated. Huh. I mean, wow. you know. And then you know the top opens up. Oh, that's that's there. where he probably kept his bottle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's the wooden pulleys, all the instructions. You know, even a, a wooden ruler. Hmm. Hey, how, open, how when you see something that small? What is that about four inch? Yeah, a four inch wooden ruler. Wow, you know? that's wild. So they, you know, they gave you all this stuff to operate. And this was probably a very expensive tool. Oh, absolutely. You know, this day. Look at that. Still got all the paperwork and yeah, everything. Everything. It looks like the, I wonder if that came from the factory. Do the way they shellacked it on. Or? I think they did because that's, huh. the, that's the instructions. Right. Wow. Now they just give you a booklet in, in 15 different languages. Now, they don't even do that. They give you they give you directly uh, to right. a website for a YouTube right, right. video. <laughs> <laughs> and then, all right, so the Hawkins Steam Educator Catechism, which this is kind of a uh, universal instruction for using these things. And they have the different makers, a Crosby, a Thompson, Tabor. Here we go. Mm -hmm. There it is right there. So here's, here you got this book, and it would show you all how to use it. It's like there's the... There's the, um, I don't want to come out of here, but, uh, you know, they're all the, the little drive pieces and stuff that would bolt onto the side. Probably tells you how to figure out which spring to use. Hmm. The pencil maker, it tells you all how it works. You know, and then, uh, hmm. and then it's all right here. Mission line, here, here's, here's the indicator diagram. It's telling you. Hmm. 
Interesting. You know? Oh well. You know, you always have something cool. Let me see what else you got here. I think I think this has been on other videos, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, Anything else in here? Yeah, all right. So these these, these are kind of neat. We I use these in my other hobby, the railroad. These are the gauges for measuring railroad car wheels. Oh really? No. So what what they did was this tool is for measuring the flanges, and th this this nifty tool tells the machinist whether he can remachine the wheel and it's any good anymore mm -hmm. before putting it in a lathe. Right. You lay this up on the back of the wheel, you put this little pointer against the flange, and then you'd right. read this scale, and it would tell you how many sixteenths or eighths or whatever it works out to right. is required that you have to take off the wheel to get to the original profile. Right, right. And then you'd read the scale down here to see how much material was left. So you could tell just by this tool whether to waste time on that wheel or not. Right. You say, because it's like, all right, there's no point in setting it off and wasting two hours right, on right. it, and you can't remachine it. But this will tell you right at a glance. We also use this uh, to check the the belly in the wheel from you know the whale from where from the rail. So right. this lays up against the flange, rinsing the radius here, and then you put a gauge underneath, and you're allowed five sixteenths inch on a switcher locomotive, hmm. uh, or a quarter inch on a road locomotive. So this this is a you know basically a, a wear tool, so you're measuring the wear on the wheel. This one here tells you your flange width so below 15 16 so you can slip that over the top the flange on the railroad car wheel mm. then that's too thin it's out of spec has to be remachined and this is the other side of it i don't know that it matters too much if it's over the inch and the 16 but as long as they're between those two things that you can get that on there All right now this width actually has a, a special thing too this is the width of the opening of the coupler on a rail car mm. you close the coupler on it give it a yank against the pin if you can get this gauge in between that gap mm -hmm. Then that coupler is, is rejected. Right. So and these little marks here, the distance is probably two inches here. Now uh, the railroad car wheels, they tend to get a little they're called shelled out. A little pieces of metal start, they start to flake away, and there's like this shelled out area. Right. There's there's specs that are you're not allowed to run the wheel if that shelled out area is over two inches, or there's two of them within four inches of the other, or something like that. I'd have to go back and look in the FRA spec. So you use these little marks, and you would hold it against the, the wheel. You'd roll around, and you'd see how big your shelled out area was, whether that wheel's rejected or whether you can run a train. Because if you have a shelled out wheel that's over, say, four inches, mm -hmm. the train can't move. That's it. It has to be uh, removed and fixed right there. Right. So, but that's that's what that's all about. That's cool. Yeah, you know, some people like machines are gonna find this really interesting. Other ones, you know. Yeah, they're like ah, they just yeah. pass it by. But they don't they don't even know what it is. No, so oh, well. So there's you know other little nifty things like half inch micrometer. I don't wow. know if they make these anymore or not, but the, you know they're good for getting into tighter places and underneath things. Yeah, right. Not yeah. everything's two foot long. Yeah, I got a couple of wow. them. Wow. Um, this is something looking in here. Something is that a giveaway or something? Yeah, it's like a little giveaway. A calendar. This calendar. This. Uh, 1967 to 1994. So I guess you change the date. Little brass thing. You turn it for the months. It's a little rotating. It was a. It says the Anderson and Sons Incorporated. Huh. Someplace in Massachusetts. You know, it's like. I remember little knickknacks like that. You know, companies yeah. just do that. Give them away and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we. You know, they don't do that anymore. No, nah, they don't. You know, but just it's just. I just seen that in there. Then uh, there's some other. We'll probably see some. Is a is a, it's a it's pretty little basic little. gauge. That's an, it's another little indicator when you... you it's like it inside, does it, both sides move or just one? No, you would hold this side here, and this is like if you wanted to line something up, you wanted to make sure something was flat, you were drawing yeah. on the table, you could see that you could measure hmm. the variation. That's pretty like cool. Like that. You know, there's no scale on it, it's just a line. Right, right. Well, that's, you know, that's, most machines just need that, especially yeah, so back you, then. You just keep a line up. There's some other micrometers here. These are patented, you know, in the 1902 hmm. or 7, looks like there. I can't see too well there. You know, there's like, this is Starrett. Would you stick your thumb in? Because somebody's going to comment on that. Oh, that that yeah. was at Cool Springs when oh, I was yeah. I was putting an, <laughs> putting an engine on it on a trailer. I had my battery drill, and I'm trying to put a long screw down to the deck, and I slipped off, and it went bang. Oh, so man. it's been three months healing, but I think after another another six more, I'll be okay. Be, yeah, it's never going to be yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, well. Careful with tools and bike. Yeah, yeah. Happens to the best of us. Yeah. Okay, and then here we got a. This is a pair of dividers that somebody somebody made, not a company made, probably the machinist made this, maybe in trade school or something. And it's just so well made. I mean, it's got it stamped nice, 1895, the points come out. I mean, that is that is just a, a work of art, just for your basic, you know, your basic pair of dividers. Yeah. And then there's one, there's one of our, I, I love it, I gotta find it, I'll show you guys here. 
know I just had it last night. Let me work it. Right. I'm going to shut this off and let you find it, because uh, if, okay. if, it's, if it's interesting to you, it'll be interesting to somebody else. Oh, here we go. I got oh, it. Here I we go. go. Okay, so these are starts, and this is the universal <laughs> caliper. It's an outside caliper, because the legs fold, and then you turn it this way. Oh. It's an inside caliper. Wow. And then you flip these over. It's a divider for wow. scribing lines and laying out circles. All in one. Wow. That's pretty slick. It is. Hmm. Oh well. Well that's it. You know, that's that's what uh, you see back a hundred, hundred and fifty years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so then, uh, some you know other miscellaneous things like you know, a little hand vice patent eighteen seventy five. I always thought this was more for jewelry use, but I guess if someone's working on little parts, yeah. you know, the taper goes up and it tightens up against the jaw. Hmm. That's pretty cool. All right. We'll probably get a little long on a tooth here, Rob. So uh, okay. right, what do you say? Well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll make another one because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have breakfast. Okay. All right. See you later, buddy. See ya. Bye.